ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, it's time for another Metal Earth kit from the guys at Fascinations. This time I'm going to dive into the Marvel Universe and start off with what I think is the most difficult kit, Iron Man. The Iron Man kit comes in two or three colors. Uh, I believe I've read somewhere that it's three sheets inside, which is more than any of the ones I've done before. It has, I'm guessing, a gold sheet, a red sheet, and possibly a silver. And it says right on the front of it, not for beginners, for advanced users or, or builders or whatever you want to call it. And I'm guessing it's right. So I'm both excited and a little intimidated, but let's uh, tear this open and find out what's inside. Iron Man. Advanced modelers, not recommended for beginners. Or, excuse me, advanced. Model, not recommended for beginners. I'm excited. What do we have in here? I'm excited to see this one. It's not just a plain silver sheets. Ta -da! And we have a red sheet, another red sheet. Oh my. A gold sheet. And another red sheet. Wow. Wow. Not what I expected at all. I thought it was three. But I guess technically it's the size of three. And there's no silver. I'm kind of expecting some silver in there somewhere. Unless I'm missing something. Let's just open this up. This is not the first sheet of paper. Move these to the side. Ah, look, here we go. It's taped on right here. Little bitty silver piece. Metal Earth 3D laser cut models. And as usual, the top half here is a little drawing of the kit, um, a bit about the folds and insertion tabs, needle nose pliers are helpful for assembling, and this is usually over here, has been moved down to create the best connections. The blue circle insert tab and bend 90 degrees for most visible areas. The green triangle insert tab and twist 90 degrees is best in some areas to ensure a tight connection. All right, that's page one, and we have two of the sheets here, the red and, which way is this guy? The red and the gold. That's page one. Let's get this opened up. Page two, we have, oh yeah, let's go back to page one, and down here is the little silver sheet, and over here are the other two red sheets, we have uh, this one, and this one, and then the assembly flowchart, put you over here, assembly flowchart starts on page two, just a little bit down. And one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So just like usual, you kind of follow along with the numbers. The flowcharts have gotten better over time. So on and so forth. Page three and four. And then the other piece of paper has five, six, and seven, eight. If we open it up, five and six, seven and eight. Never so completed the kit. Alright. So, what kind of tools am I going to need? The tools I will be using, most likely, for this kit. We have our usual tweezers. They still come in handy. Have the fascinations toolkit set with the ever so valuable clippers for getting parts off of the trees or spruce, whatever we call it, 
long nose pliers for bending and shaping, flat nose pliers also bending and shaping. I may find these Kelly clamps or mosquitoes or, or locking clamps very useful for some parts, for holding on the parts. We will see. I can see myself possibly using some dowel rods or step mandrels for rounding of parts or I have a cheap drill bit set here. I don't see using this a lot for this kit, but some. And I can also see me using these round nose pliers to do a lot of shapings and curves and such. I find it's often ha helpful to have some sort of knife or blade, not necessarily a sharp one, but good for getting into spots and wedging things apart, wedging tabs over, because that does sometimes happen. You have a tab that's too close to a, to a side or another part and you can't get anything else in there to work with it. And some sort of dental type tools or picks. These are good for reaching in and pulling out areas that have sunk too far. Good for aligning tabs when you're trying to get the parts together. They have several uses. But enough talk. Let's get working on this kit. I often use my fingernails to bend over tabs. and repeat for the other foot. I had to make some adjustments to the bottom of the foot so that it would sit flat. I originally used a dowel rod to put a bit of a curve on part 7. The second part 7, I did not use a dowel rod, it was not really needed. I would get one tab inserted and twisted and then work on the other tab.
This kit introduced a bit of a new way to attach parts, or at least new to me. Part 9, when assembled with part 10 and 11, fit inside of part 12. The way it is attached is with two tabs that are bent out from the front and back parts of 9. I did not understand it first and had a very difficult time. It ended with me breaking the seam on the leg. You should set part 9 inside of 12 and attach the back tab before folding 12 the rest of the way closed. It's tricky and will need some coaxing and flexing. I try my best to check and make sure I am on camera, but sometimes I get so carried away with my work I forget to check. Several times the instructions say to twist tabs, but there was just not enough room. I ended up bending a number of tabs over with the blade of the hobby knife. And now I'll repeat the last few steps for the other leg. The dowel rod came in very handy here. Although the shape is partially tapered, the dowel rod gives you a good starting point. Part 22 has lots of tiny flaps to bend down. I started trying to use these small locking clamps or mosquito clamps, but ended up just using my fingernail to carefully and slowly bend them all over. I also found it helpful to curve one of the tabs into a sort of hook, inserted the straight tab into its slot, and then lay down and line up the hook one. Because several of these parts are curved, it helped a lot.
Part 24 is another place worth hooking one of the tabs heads. It was at this point that I realized I was not supposed to close part 23 yet. This is another example of one part going inside of another. and repeat the last few steps for the other leg. I originally curved part 32 the wrong way. The instructions show the engraved side as being outside, but to look at the part, both sides are engraved, one more so than the other. I went with the more engraved side when that was the side that actually goes in. It seems to me that part 32 and 34 are listed backwards on the instructions. I had trouble getting the tabs to line up. Once I switched them, they lined up fine.
I am surprised at how easily the two main parts of the torso came together. I thought for sure that it was going to be rather tough. However, getting the torso into place with the hips was tricky. It is a tight fit, plus you want to be careful not to bend the tabs as you are sliding them into place. I used the needle nose pliers to put pressure on the inside to push the tabs out all the way before I bent them. There was just too much Iron Man to fit in one video. Check out part 2 to see the rest of the build and a recap.